Now, even though 2013 brought us some decent tablets to the market, that doesn't really mean that we got everything that we wanted. There are some tablets out there that still need a lot of work. So, anyways, I'm Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now, and these are our top five wishes for tablets in the industry in 2014. Number five is more winning players, and this is probably one of the biggest tech ironies in history. Microsoft invented the category and they're struggling with it, and then Apple is actually doing a lot more money than everybody else, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the iPad is the best tablet. Uh, we do have some Samsung tablets out there that are good, but we need more winning players, and even though Google is doing a good job with their Nexus lineup and disrupting the tablet price tag, it, again, we need better tablets. We need more winning players. We need more innovation here. Probably some better companies, new blood. You never know. Number four four has better displays, and this probably should be number one, but anyways. It makes sense for you to have a TV that has 1080p that's, you know, a couple of feet away from you, and it makes sense for that to happen as well for certain computers, but it does not make sense for tablets. If these are media consumption devices, you need the best experience. You can't read a magazine that's all pixelated. Doesn't make any sense. So we really need better displays, better image quality. These things should behave like paper, or they should behave like a TV in pretty much every way, but in better quality. So stay tuned. We hope to see better displays here. No more 1080p. 1080p and tablets does not make sense. Number three is better storage options. 16 and 8 gigabytes should die when it comes to tablets. The reason why is because, for example, a game on tablets could weigh around 1.8, 1.5 gigs, and then probably a magazine, 500 megabytes. A movie, three gigs, and when you think about it, a tablet is something that's supposed to be portable and that's supposed to give you a lot of great experiences. But then again, if you have very limited storage at $500, uh, you have to be carrying a computer to load more stuff on the tablet, and that's when it becomes pointless and please do not give me the whole Google Drive or Dropbox story. It really doesn't make sense for tablets. Not everybody can afford a 3G or 4G tablet. Number two is more reliable software, and we don't have anything against Windows RT except whenever we have to use it. And that's really one of the biggest problems that we have with certain tablets. The fact that you launch anything on Windows RT and it takes ages for it to launch. Or for example, Samsung Galaxy tablets, especially the Note lineup that has multi-window support and everything, it's really pointless to see everything crash all the time, and we don't really understand why. What is the point of you having a sort of a, a supposedly productivity device, uh, sometimes, not necessarily every time, having it crash all the time? And this is really one of the biggest problems and one of the biggest reasons why iPads sell. Uh, because they are probably the most reliable tablets, but not necessarily the best ones. And the top number one thing that we wish would change for 2014 is more productivity on tablets. And by this I don't just mean multi-window support, which is a good addition, or Microsoft Office on a tablet is a good addition, but not necessarily everything. There are a ton of engineering students out there that can afford a laptop and a tablet. And we don't just need a big bloated smartphone when it comes to the tablet. We want a tablet that actually is able to do a lot of stuff, and not everybody can afford a Surface Pro 2 as well. So again, there is this big market of people out there that want a tablet that can do everything well. And even though there's really not something you can get right now, or probably in the next five years, we do hope that the whole 64-bit processor thing will allow us to have better applications in the future, more powerful applications specific to any specific niche, and not just running Office on tablets. Again, that's not everything. But that leads us to the question of this top five. What would you add? What would you wish for for tablets in 2014? Because in my particular case, again, I don't really like carrying a tablet and a computer, but I have to right now because both can't really do the same thing well. But anyways, leave us a comment down below. What's your case? That's it for today's top five. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next top five.